Welcome to this brief podcast on the late Robert K. Merton, erstwhile professor of sociology at Columbia University. Robert Merton was among the most prominent American sociologists in the generation immediately preceding that of your most senior professors, including me. He was an astounding intellect and major contributor to modern empirical, sociological theory, and sociological research. He taught at Harvard, Tulane, and then joined the faculty of Columbia, where he became a Giddings professor in 1963. In 1974, he achieved the highest rank at Columbia University as a university professor. And throughout his career, he collected or received numerous awards and recognitions, including being elected to the Royal Swedish Academy of the Sciences, a Guggenheim Fellowship, being named a MacArthur Fellow, and a recipient of the U.S. National Medal of Science, and the first sociologist to receive this award. Among the many contributions of Robert Merton are theories of the middle range or theoretical explanations grounded in and extending beyond specific empirical realities. Here, Merton replaced grand theory with theories of smaller scope, concepts developed from empirical observations and connections or explanations that could be tested with data. Role theory, or social roles, which provides an excellent example of middle range theories, and an elaboration of functional analysis to include more precise explanations of social functions. Among Robert Merton's most important contributions are role theory and role sets. Roles are behavioral expectations that arise from occupying a status or position. Merton begins with the concept that each social status involves not a single associated role, but an array of roles. Thus, the UNC medical student plays not only the role of student vis-a-vis the correlative status of his or her teachers, but also an array of other roles relating directly to others in the system, other students, physicians, nurses, social workers, or medical technicians. Each status is embedded in a set of roles that involve an expectation of coordinated action. However, people in modern societies occupy or also occupy a number of statuses with different expectations for each. We can observe empirically the conflicting expectations from different individuals and different roles, or statuses across our social world. There is always a potential for differing expectations among status or role incumbents regarding appropriate conduct for a status occupant. Time-energy conflicts, incompatible expectations, and then, of course, there is role strain, meaning incompatible expectations within the same role. Merton also elaborated on functional analysis, making a distinction between manifest and latent functions. Manifest functions are those objective consequences for a specified unit which contribute to its adjustment or adaptation and were also so intended. Latent functions represent or means unintended or unrecognized consequences. 
So for example, the function of a class or the function of a college is education. A latent function is that students at the college have a high probability of forming permanent lifetime bonds such as marriages, resulting in a higher probability of students marrying somebody from the same educational level. Merton's work included dysfunctions, that is, he does not imply that all institutions are inherently good for society, thus emphasizing the importance and existence of dysfunctional social units. Here he largely refers to items like gangs. Of central importance for our course are Merton's theories of the middle range. Sociological theory refers to logically interconnected sets of propositions from which empirical uniformities can be derived. Theories of the middle range that lie between the minor but necessary working hypotheses that evolve in abundance during day-to-day -day research and the all-inclusive systematic efforts to develop a unified theory that will explain all the observed uniformities of social behavior, social organization, and social change. Thus, theories of the middle range help us connect these everyday observations and hypotheses to a larger picture. Middle range theory is principally used to guide empirical inquiry. Each theory is more than an empirical generalization, more than an isolated proposition summarizing observed uniformities of relationships between two or more variables, that is, two or more concepts that have been operationalized into a variable that can be measured. A great example of a middle range theory is Merton's typology on deviance. Merton used the term NOME from Durkheim to mean a discontinuity between cultural goals and the legitimate means available for reaching them. Thus, he derived four modes of adaptation plus the rebellion mode in a fourfold table. Institutionalized means are accepted or rejected, and cultural goals are accepted or rejected. Thus, conformity is the acceptance of both goals and means. Innovation the acceptance of the goals, but rejection of the means. This is a professional thief. The ritualist rejects the goals, but accepts the means, whereas the retreatist rejects both the goals and the means. Rebellion for Merton is a case in which the socially accepted goals and means are replaced by other goals and means. Thus we have here an example of middle range theory from Merton. Merton provides us with a number of ideas and concepts that will be useful as we move forward to evaluate sociological theories.